What are these new crazy blocks that have these crazy user interface menus inside of them? The structure block. We'll find out. Hello everyone and welcome to OMG Craft. I'm your host, OMG Chad. Today we are talking all about the new structure block introduced in Minecraft 1.10. Currently, this is still snapshot version, so hopefully nothing that I say will change, but these structure blocks are amazing. Map makers are going to love them. They allow you to copy and paste and rotate and get rid of air blocks and all sorts of stuff. So let me show how they work. So we're inside of this tiny little uh, village here. I thought, what better way to show off structure blocks than an area that already has structures? So here is how these structure blocks work. First, we're gonna act like you don't get have any. So you're gonna have to give yourself, give either your name or at P, which is the uh, closest player, Minecraft and structure block. And that will pop one into your inventory. They look like this, but they actually have four different modes. And you change the mode by hitting this button in the corner. Whenever you change the mode, the texture on the block actually changes, which you can actually see it doing that behind the menu that I have there. So you have this sort of this cross, a circle or a sphere that is filled, a sphere that is hollow, and a cube or a square that is hollow. Now, the first one is the data block, and I'll be honest, I actually, I have not figured out what this is for. There, It's written in the wiki that this is used for saving NBT data for uh, ten tile entities by setting it next to them, but I, to be honest, I, it saves entities. A normal save block will save entities. It's confusing to me. There's also no UI, GUI for hitting save on I'm just confused by uh, that block. It is a development build, so maybe there's some functionality that hasn't been built in yet. That's what I'm going to guess. Next is the save menu. That's what this looks like. You can tell it says save mode, right to file. And we're going to get into that a little bit later. We're going to get into all of these in depth. Next is the load menu. And next is the corner block. So that's what all of those are. So let's go ahead and save something. We're going to help save this forge. How about that? Uh, first, let's put down a block. We'll move it to save. We're going to have to give it a name or it will not save. So we're going to name this forge. And then you're going to choose a relative position. And this is where your selection is going to start to select. Uh, so we're going to just kind of guess on this. I'm going to guess uh, five. I definitely know that it's zero because it's going to be on the level that I place the block on and who knows maybe three the structure size once again I'm, I'm not exactly certain uh, let's just guess then you can hit detect and it will make a bounding box where you have made your selection and you can tell that this is way off and this is not where I want it to be so probably something like this Hit done and it will move your selection. I, you kind of see, okay, wow, I'm actually pretty close. So I'm gonna need to move it one over, make it one longer and move it two towards me because uh, I wanna get these stairs in there as well. So structure size is one larger and then we're gonna need to move it closer to me. So that's gonna be one, there we go. Oh, and we've selected it. Okay, good. So now we're done. So that's how you select with relative position. Uh, then you can go ahead and hit save. And you have it saved under the name Forge. Then let's go ahead and load it. And we're going to get in here and hit go to load. We're going to have to name this exactly what we saved the previous one. You'll choose a position that you want. And let's just guess here something like that. Then once you hit load, it will actually give you a, uh, it'll kind of show you where it is about ready to be placed. So maybe let's turn that to negative two. Oh, that's moving. No, we actually liked that at three and maybe that is negative two. Keep going here. This is all kind of guessing. There we go. And that's a great place to paste it. So we're going to hit load again. Boop. 
And there, now it has been loaded in, which is really, really great. So let's go over a few of the things that are a little bit different though inside of each of these menus. First to show invisible blocks and that will show, whoops, I hit escape, which cancels out. Uh, it will show all of the blocks that are air and you might not think this is a very useful, but if I'm going to do something like this, where my structure is going to hit into uh, this other structure, and we're gonna go ahead and load that in, boop. It will create these air pockets in between the buildings where it has copied air and then pasted air inside. And you can actually get rid of that air. And you do that by giving yourself a Minecraft structure void block. Oops, apparently there's a lot of things that start with ST, <laughs> structure void is what you're looking for. And anytime that you push this down, it's just like any other block, you can see that the bounding box or the wireframe of the other blocks becomes smaller. Now I've actually gone ahead and already uh, done this and I'm gonna just rush over here and go to load and we're gonna say negative four and this is going to be uh, the structure of one. And let's see what that looks like. So it's going to put it into the ground here. And if I go ahead and load it, you can see that once I get inside, oh, this is the back of, uh, back of it. There we go. Oh my gosh, I'm breaking in. Uh, that there's actually, where, where's this entrance here? Oh, oh, here it is. Okay, so this is the entrance. So you can see that dirt has filled in a lot of this furnace of this uh, this um, forge, and that is because I made all of this inside of here void blocks, which allowed it to paste within the dirt itself. So it'd be a really cool idea to bury something. Now what's interesting is inside of here, I didn't add void blocks. So that is why it's not encased in dirt like the rest of the build because I didn't put in those void blocks. So void blocks can help you paste in something into another block. Now let me quickly make sure you could uh, choose to include entities on uh, or off and that is the end of uh, the save block. Now you have everything that you need to know about that. One last thing I want to show about the load block, if we go to load, is that you can change the way that your uh, item is rotated, and that is these bottom um, buttons right here. So you can rotate it 90, 180, or 170 degree, or 270 degrees. You can also decide to uh, flip it. So you can uh, flip it, uh, mirror it, you can uh, do a few different uh, directions of uh, flipping and mirroring your uh, file before it gets pasted in. Now, finally, I wanna show off one of the probably the uh, most powerful block, which is the corner block. And uh, I know it may not seem like the most powerful block, but it really is. So let's say that we're going to save this and we're gonna name this one uh, Forge2, F-O-R, <laughs> I need to add a R there. Uh, and I didn't wanna go through the process of all this relative positioning. Okay, seriously, that's like way too much work. I can actually come over here and place down another block and set this into corner mode and name it Forge 2 as well. Now I can jump back over here and instead of doing all this relative stuff, I can hit detect under detect structure size and portion and it will actually pay, make a bounding box, make a wireframe around my selection. Now you can tell that it does it from the corner of the block. The block is not included, it's from uh, the last corner. So you can do, uh, do it the way that I just did it right there where you have uh, one corner and one uh, copy block or you could also, there's another method uh, to this 
where you can, once I am able to put down another one, we're gonna call this one home and we'll jump over here and name this home. Now, these are going to be two corner blocks. You, you can do either of this and then once I put down a save and say home and hit detect. Oh, what did I do? You are a data block named home. You need to be a corner block named home. There you go. And now we have two corner blocks named home and hit detect and it detects the two corner blocks instead of the one save block and a corner block. So very, very, very powerful to use those corner blocks so that you don't have to go through that kind of fiddly process uh, that I did that I started with this uh, forge over here and you can just use corner blocks. Now you might be thinking, oh my gosh, there's all these little bounding boxes, there are all these wireframes everywhere. If you break the boxes or you break the structure um, structures, they will get rid of themselves. And then finally, uh, I just want to show off this structural integrity. And that is when you're in the load screen, let's go ahead and load our forge. And we'll say zero, zero. Let's just go ahead. Where is that going to? Oh, <laughs> I keep spelling forge without an R. That is the weirdest thing. Um, okay, let's go ahead and see. That's where it's going to place itself down. And I actually kind of want you to be one away. There we go. So the structural integrity, this can be from one to zero or anywhere in between. So if we set this at 0.5, what it's going to do is it's only going to copy in 0.5 of the full structure. And then you could use that to make a structure look decayed, make it look broken. We're gonna choose 0.75. And then you have a seed, and that is to randomize the decay so that it doesn't decay in the same way every single time. So once we hit done here, uh, actually, let's go ahead and hit load. So you can see 75% of, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's flowing out. Oh no, 75%, uh, only 75% was copied and there's a lot of blocks missing, which is kind of an easy way to add decay to your structures, which I think is really, really neat. So that is structure blocks in the new Minecraft 1.10. With structure blocks, really your imagination is the limit because you could make amazing cities that have completely different rotated buildings and mine shafts underneath that flow perfectly with the current soil that doesn't degrade it. I mean, it is just absolutely amazing what you can accomplish with structure blocks. And I think that this is going to, you know what, something I didn't even mention is you can uh, activate them with redstone. Didn't even say that in the, uh, when we we're over at the computer. So you could set it up so that it's powered by a redstone signal. So it generates the structure in front of the character. I mean, there's really so much that you can do with these new structure bo blocks. So jump in and have fun. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below your ideas on what you're going to do with these structure blocks. And then please subscribe to the channel, youtube.com slash omgcraft, if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.